Hello, this is a short video on the first stage of respiration, both, well, first stage of aerobic respiration and the only stage really that takes place during anaerobic respiration. This is glycolysis. Uh, it takes place in the cytoplasm, and in fact, in any of your responses, it's worth linking those two things together to say glycolysis in the cytoplasm. Certainly not going to lose any marks for saying that. Now, this is the only part of our only part of respiration that is able to occur without oxygen. This is the anaerobic stage of uh, of respiration. Okay, so we begin with a six carbon. Glucose molecule. Okay, I've drawn glucose as a chain here, unlike how we usually show it uh, in its ring structure. Okay, I've only shown the uh, the carbons here because really it's, it's just those carbons that we are uh, concerned about. Okay, now glucose is very unreactive. really. And that's important because it needs to be transported in the blood, uh, transported around the cell, etc. It would be problematic if that glucose was unreactive. So glucose itself is unreactive and inert. To make it more reactive and to allow glycolysis to begin, it must first be phosphorylated. And that means it receives inorganic phosphate uh, ions from ATP. So, at the start of glycolysis, and this may be a little bit counterintuitive to begin with, uh, two molecules of ATP are used. And those two molecules of ATP uh, are donate their inorganic phosphates to the glucose molecule to produce two ADPs and then those inorganic phosphates are added to, to activate, to make that glucose more reactive. And in fact, this six carbon uh, molecule with two inorganic phosphates is so reactive that it immediately splits into two three carbon molecules. Okay. Each with their own inorganic phosphate. This molecule is called triosphosphate. So, we've now got two molecules of triose, tri meaning three, triose, ose meaning sugar, triose. Two triosphosphates. <clears throat> triosphosphate then undergoes oxidation. Now, if you remember, uh, those of you that do chemistry, this will be really familiar to you. Uh, the rest of you might need to remember back to GCSE. You might remember this uh, helpful uh, tool, I suppose. I can't think what it's called. Uh, oil ring, or oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. And what we mean that by that is oxidation is the loss of hydrogen, or the loss of electrons. Reduction is the gain of hydrogen, or the gain of electrons. Triosphosphate is oxidised, which means it must lose hydrogen and electrons. And it is oxidised down into another uh, three carbon molecule, 
So each one is oxidized into this second three carbon molecule called pyruvate. And we produce two or well, two pyruvate molecules are produced. You may also know from an oxidation reduction, so from redox reactions, that if one molecule is oxidized, as has happened here, another molecule must be reduced, become uh, in pairs. So this is where a, uh, another important molecule uh, in biology comes in called NAD. And NAD in its uh, oxidized form accepts the hydrogen and the electrons from the, uh, from the trans phosphate and is therefore reduced. So that NAD, oxidized NAD, becomes reduced NAD. Okay, and you may see it written as reduced NAD. Sometimes you see it as uh, NADH, sometimes as NADH plus uh, uh, plus H plus, sometimes as NADH2. Okay, I'm just going to leave those two short forms there. But the important thing is, refer to this as either NADH or reduced NAD. And that happens to both triosphosphates. Another oxidized NAD accepts protons, hydrogen, and electrons from the second triosphosphate, and it also becomes reduced NAD. Now this reduced NAD is really important because it will be used later on in, uh, in respiration to provide high energy electrons and hydrogen to the final stage of aerobic respiration, which is in fact where most of the uh, ATP is produced. But you're probably thinking, well, so far we've only used two molecules of ATP, we've actually lost ATP here. So, an oxidation is an exergonic reaction, meaning it gives off or releases energy. That energy is captured by the phosphorylation of ADP with inorganic phosphate to produce two ATPs. So two ADPs and an inorganic phosphate and that inorganic phosphate from, uh, from the triosphosphate all combine to make two ATPs here and that also happens here as well. So two ADP plus inorganic phosphate produce two ATP. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that is the complete process of, um, of glycolysis, which is occurring in the cytoplasm without oxygen. For each of these stages, it's important to, uh, uh, to summarise the products. So from, uh, from glycolysis, we get the following products. Okay, so two pyruvate, which move into the second stage of aerobic respiration, uh, or are used in anaerobic respiration. I won't go into that now. We get four ATP have been produced. So we get a gross production of four ATP. However, two have been used up here. So the net products, therefore, are 
to a TP, and we also get two reduced NADs. Okay, so these are the three products from glycolysis. A couple more details that I'll add then is this first stage where glucose receives uh, inorganic phosphate from ATP is referred to as phosphorylation of glucose. Phosphorylation of glucose. <clears throat> the production of the ATP here is by a process called substrate level phosphorylation. And that just means that the, uh, the inorganic phosphate group is, has been transferred directly from a substrate, i.e. the triose phosphate, onto ADP. Okay, this is known as substrate level phosphorylation. Glucose receiving that um, Inorganic phosphate is also a type of phosphorylation. Okay, and that is the, uh, the complete process.